All right, everybody, man, welcome to another edition of Swag Talk, the show we cover the swag inside and out. Of course, I'm your tour guide around the swag, Steve Wells, coming at you. And, you know, this is, you know, a video that, you know, you never want to have to make, man. You know, it's like you, you get game day coming up tomorrow, week zero, getting ready to get started. Got two swag games. And then, you know, you get an issue like this pop up. In case you haven't heard, um, I, you know, um, everybody has heard by now, but in case you haven't, uh, fam, you had actually had some issues with compliance and academics, and so they have 20 guys that are not making the trip. They those guys are deemed ineligible at the moment. Um, so they're you know they're working to appeal and get some things straightened out. Um, you know there's a lot of things going back and forth. So I try to you know to take the find the most accurate that I can find. So you know things change fluidly. So some of the stuff I'm 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 um kind of going over is things that may not be the case, you know. So they, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of sharing my feelings on this. Um, like I said, it's a situation that's gonna be back and forth, and you know, maybe some things will change between now and next week. But as of right now, the, the Rattlers are in North Carolina. Uh, they touched down a little while ago, um, so they are there. They're gonna play. Uh, they 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 stand up. They're going to gain 450K for this game. So, you know, that was, you know, a huge reason to play this game. I think somebody said the fine to, put, to play was like 500K. I don't know if that's accurate, but, you know, that's, you know, you got to kind of play. You don't want to have to pay, you know, that much money to not play this game. So um, these kind of things happen. You know, I, I know a lot of people like how to, you know, how did this happen? Um, not to this number. But um, a few years ago, Southern had some issues with compliance and, and paperwork and things. And they actually had guys taken off the bus right before they left to go to Nashville. I, I want to I can't remember. Was it 2012 or 2011? Um, you know, my Jags can probably correct me on that. But, you know, these kind of things do happen. And Southern got, you know, that opened up a lot, a big, big, a big, big um, can of worms. And they got, you know, they got sanctioned due to that. And. You know, they had to really reevaluate and regroup their, their their support staff and compliance office. So FAMU only at the moment has one compliance person in office. So that's a lot of work for over 250 athletes. You know, that's a lot of things to be taken care of. And, you know, you're getting guys coming in, transferring in and, you know, making sure all the credits transfer over and all, you know, things like that. Um, that's a tough, you know, that's a tough situation. And that opens up a can of worms about all our schools. Um, we're obviously not funded at enough um, to grow an athletic department to the level that a lot of people are talking about. You need support staff, man. It's not just the guys on the field. It's not just the coaches. It's not just, you know, what league you in, man. You need to have people off the field, probably more to take care of everything that comes up. I mean, because you, as you grow your team, as you grow your department, and if you talk to FBS, you're looking at 85 scholarship guys, 150 plus guys on the team with walk-ons. You're looking at a lot of people just in football alone. That doesn't count all of the sports. So we, you know, we need to find a way to get these programs funded properly um, to make this, to make these kind of things happen. And also, you know, that, uh, you know, a lot of people have said that the family president is not really in tune with athletics. Um, you need to have a, a president that understands the role that athletics plays at the university. Um, I'm not saying athletics should supersede academics, but you need to have a that they get that together. Athletics is the front porch to your school. So you need to support and understand that this 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 shines on you as a university. You know, it's not just like that's the athletic department over there. They don't really have nothing to do with us. You know, it, it, you love it when we win. So you need to have that connection and, you know, you need to have the proper people in place. And the AD situation that found you, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm not well, well versed enough to really touch on it. Like, you know, like a lot of Rattlers can do. But, you know, they are, they're, they're still in a search for an AD. You know what I mean? They, they got a big search committee and I knew that was going to be a problem. Um, so they still had that going on and now you have this and basically, you know, like I said, in case you hadn't heard, um, earlier this afternoon, a report came out, um, that fam, you was going to be missing some guys, you know, some, they didn't have a set number. 
um, at that time, it was like 20 plus. Um, then the reports came out that it was 40, and then it was 27, and now I think it's 20 um, guys that are not going, and um, they are left with seven, seven healthy offensive linemen making the trip. And you know, to kind of talk talk about the football side of that, that's you know that's a scary number, and it's not just the seven that makes me nervous. Um, we don't know who who is not making the trip. Um, are those offensive linemen that didn't make the trip, are they starters? Uh, how many starters do you have? How many guys who are running like second team that are making the trip? Um, is this like a total patchwork offensive line of guys, you know, that may not have played that much? And, and you know, so that's, a you know, on the field aspect, that's a huge issue um, to have with the offensive line not having that cohesion um, because, as you know, the offensive line is obviously the most important unit on the, t- on the team. And they have to gel and work together and being, you know, patchwork, you know, no depth, really. You know, you only have two guys and, you know, hey, what positions can they play? You know, can they, you know, can people slide up and down the line? Um, so some people's versatility is going to be really tested in this game. Um, you, you're just going to have to, you know, really hope you get out of this with no no major injuries. Um, really, for that unit. You really can't have any any people, but you're gonna have to you know switch some people out because it's gonna be hot, you know, and it's, you're gonna have a, a game going. Um, and we don't know anything else other than um, the big the big name Isaiah Land is not playing in this game, um, and that's a huge thing. You know, a lot of people feel like this game is you know his opportunity to shine um, as far as his future. Um, so missing this opportunity and who knows if he'll be able to come back. They are working to get him eligible for next week. Um, so that's something that, you know, that that's, that sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, there were other reports that th- it was three guys who um, were like all conference guys who are making the trip. Can't confirm or deny that because no, no other information has come out, but um, it's, you know, it's just a situation that you really never want to have to talk about, man. You know, um, I was trying to, I, before I came on the air, I had saw a list of, um, the number of compliance officers at each school and I can't find it now. So I'm not really going to go too deep into it, but seven of the 12 teams on that list. Now, like I said, I don't know how accurate this is. I didn't, I didn't do the research. I saw a tweet. Um, seven of those of the 12 teams in the conference have one, um, one compliance officer, uh, two, uh, let's see, um, seven had one, uh, one had four, one had three, and the other three had two. So various amounts, you know, I mean, everybody's department needs to be, you know, revamped and properly funded to get, you know, to get the proper amount of people to do the job um, in, in those situations. So um, not a lot of, re- you know, it's really not a lot of other things to kind of sink your teeth into in this situation because this is something that I think you're going to get bits and pieces coming out um, as, as the time go. Um, they also, FAMU also has one academic advisor for all of athletics, and that's a tough job to have. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, hopefully this can shine some light on some things and, and get some, you know, get some change made. You know, you hate to see this happen. Um, it, it, the, the, I guess you can say um, if they can get this worked out and get, you know, and get some of these guys back. Then it is it, so you know that's that's a thing that you know is I won't say it's good that it happened, but if they didn't have this week zero game, then these guys would be out for sure for the Orange Blossom Classic, which would have which would have been their first game of the season. So that not necessarily a silver lining, but that's something that you know hopefully they have some time to work some things out and get some things fixed, and you know, but. Is you know this is just not a you know it's not a good look you know I mean there's no other way to spin it um that other than it's not a good look and it's something that you know it, it shines a light on on some things that a lot of people may not know so in one on one hand hey maybe it, it maybe it's good that you know that light is shown now but it's also bad because the light is being shown on, on things that people um. A, a lot, of, a lot of people only see that this team is missing guys for, um, for certain reasons, and that's you know that's never gonna be a, a good thing. So, like I said, I just you know wanted to hop in on here and, and kind of touch on this situation. I'm not gonna go 
too deep into it because, like I said, there's so much other stuff coming and going, um, and it, it's tough to kind of pick and choose what's what's real and what's not. Um, I do want to say I got a lot of my information uh, at, uh, from the Twitter page of Allison Posey. Uh, she is the ABC sports. She's the sports director for the ABC channel in Tallahassee. So um, she pretty much was on top of this from Jump Street. So um, I do want to, you know, most of my information came from now. Everything else I, I kind of glean from, you know, here or there. So, you know, you can take what I say with, you know, with a grain of salt. And hopefully, you know, this, this situation can get worked out and we can focus on football because, I mean, you know, that's what we're here for. Um, so hopefully, you know, we won't have to make another video about this. And, and we could just move on and get ready for the season. So until next time, I'm C. Wells, man. I'm signing up out of here, y'all. Enjoy your weekend. Um, still, you know, hey, it's, it's still go Rattlers for the weekend, and it's still go Hornets. We swarming as one in, in Atlanta. So, you know, we'll be back on Sunday to recap both of those games. And hopefully, you know, if any other information comes through, you know, we'll touch on it. But you know, like I said, these are the type of videos I don't like to make. So I just wanted to come in and share my thoughts, and I'll catch you guys on Sunday. Peace.